Hi, I'm Tabitha Williams, and welcome to What's Eating Harlem. We cover the most exciting community in the world. There's so much happening in Harlem. Let's get started. There was a play downtown with two South African actors. One of the members of my theater company who was South African says, Vosa, there's a play with two actors from my country. You guys need to see it. So we go down to uh, a theater in the village and we see this play and I've never seen acting like this before. They are Harlem icons. We sit down with Lloyd Williams and Vosa Rivers to discuss part one of their Harlem legacies. Harlem hosted an event celebrating successful Black and Latina women business leaders. All of that and more coming up next. This program was made possible by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, the Harlem Community Development Corporation, and by the West Harlem Development Corporation. Solutions through collaboration. These two Harlem icons have been friends for over 70 years, and they have been untiring Harlem advocates for over 60 years. Lloyd Williams and Bosa Rivers are true Harlem heroes. It's important that when you leave today, you make sure that there's a minimum of two persons that you did not know when you walked in this door that you know when you're going out. Not As the president of the Greater Harlem beautiful. Chamber of Commerce and, and the chairman of Harlem Week, Mr. Williams has been a guiding light for business in Harlem. At the Harlem Chamber, he has helped and supported the success of hundreds of Harlem businesses for decades. And being one of the founders of Harlem Week, which started out as a one-day event, he has helped grow it into one of the most successful festivals in the world. Harlem Week is something that was created uh, 40 some odd years ago by a unique combination of uh, uh, persons such as Tito Puente and uh, Ozzie Davis and Max Roach and James Baldwin uh, and we can go on and on with Percy Sutton being the head of that. The focus of that uh, years ago was recognizing that we were in the doldrums at that time. Uh, things could not have been worse in the urban uh, areas in the world but particularly uh, in America and even more so in New York. At that time, abandonment of property, uh, crime soaring, uh, drug epidemic, etc. And many people determined that they would then leave those areas and leave the Harlems of the world and of course that impacted on Harlem, New York. Uh, and Percy Sutton and others said, no, let's come together and let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on what we have. Let's focus on the uniqueness of our community. And we created something called Harlem Day. And in so doing, what we did, we cut a ribbon uh, at 138th Street and 7th Avenue on the fourth Saturday in August. Uh, and, uh, that was 1974. And when we cut that ribbon, uh, that uh, day, we formally renamed 7th Avenue Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. The first time a, a street in New York City 
had ever been named uh, after a person of color. And that's how we started Harlem Day. Mr. Williams developed his leadership abilities by having great mentors, one of whom is his famous godfather. Malcolm X was my godfather, so I, I start with Malcolm, and I learned so much from him uh, in terms of how to look at life. Uh, my mentor, a senior mentor, was uh, Honorable Percy E. Sutton, uh, uh, and I could go on with other names, but the most important person in my life was my grandmother. Uh, she is the one who directed me and directed our family in terms of what we need to do. Harlem is a state of mind. Harlem is not a geographical area in Manhattan. Uh, Harlem is in Kingston, Jamaica. Harlem is in Roxbury, Massachusetts. It's in East St. Louis. It's in Watts, LA. It's Bristol, England. Wherever there are people of color who have a cultural backdrop, they are Harlemites. So what I love about Harlem is its culture. I love its history. I love its uh, stick to uh, in the most difficult of times. Percy Sutton also played a very important role in Voza Rivers' life. I got drafted by the Army, and I knew that I didn't want to go because I didn't believe in the Vietnam War. And I was trying to figure out if I should leave the country and go to Canada like some of my friends did so they could avoid going into a war that we didn't believe in. Percy Sutton, I spoke, he was the borough president and had a conversation with him about going into the war. And he said, well, you know, Voza, there are certain occupations that are exempt. And it's in, uh, there are certain government contracts they need people still. Uh, there are certain occupations like police, firemen, construction workers, engineers, etc." I said, oh, so if you made a decision about any of those positions, I will try and help you find a way to be a part of it so that you don't have to go. The school right here, 135th Street is very important to me. 135th Street, it was a, they're still there. It was a, 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 back then my mother went to the school, my sister went. It was called Harriet Beecher Stowe, Junior High School 136. It was an all girls school. But you can go in on any Saturday and take a civil service exam. And so that's what I did. I walked, I took a civil service exam, and the only exam that day was for a police officer. So I took the exam, and I, I got a real high mark on the exam. And I told Mr. Sutton, and he said, well, Rosa, maybe you should go, what war would you rather be in? Local or, <laughs> or a war that you didn't believe in? And I decided to go into the police department. He was the borough president, he says, and I'll look after you. I was assigned to something very, very special in the police department, and that was the creation of something called Comstat. Comstat is used to predict, based on statistical information, where crime will probably happen. It is used by the police departments all over the world now, but I worked on it and at the New York City Police Department before they adopted it. And then I was assigned to the court system and I used to sit with judges and, uh, and district attorneys and legal defense talking about the justice system back then and how police officers testify, how they change stories and be a watchdog to make sure that what really happened is how they testified to what happened. Not only was Voza a special detective for the NYPD, he was an accountant and later a stage and film producer.
to get you involved, visit our website, www.whatseatingharlem.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like our Facebook. During Women's History Month, Chase Community Bank in Harlem hosted an event celebrating successful Black and Latina women business leaders. They were there to share their stories, perspectives, and insights on building a successful business career. The first panelist was Carolina Janicelli. Carolina serves on the corporate board Unidos US the nation's largest Hispanic slash Latino civil rights and advocacy organization. She was recently named as one of 500 most influential people in Latin America by Bloomberg. She truly is a trailblazer for Latinas. Today's event centers around women and particularly financial literacy. How important is it for women to be financially literate? It is the beginning of the journey. Financial literacy leads to financial security, financial stability that are the building blocks for building wealth. So knowing the basics of how to manage our personal finances, a simple budget, how to build our credit history are absolutely critical to get to the point where we can save enough to buy our first home, for example, which is a key builder of generational wealth, or to get a loan to grow a small business if that's the direction we want to go. Hmm. Now, who was your first introduction into the world of finances? So believe it or not, my college roommate. I studied finance and investments, and my roommate came in one day talking about how she got this internship. And I'm like, really? Tell me more. Uh, and it turns out it was an investment banking analyst program, um, super competitive to get into, but she did it. She's a fellow Central American like me. And the minute she got into the program, I knew I could get into the program too. And that was the first time that this possibility of, of working in Wall Street came into my life. That's really exciting, and thank you for sharing. I'm looking forward to hearing more of your story and the steps that you took as you speak on this panel for Women Leading the Way. Thank you. Thank you. The second panelist was Sandra Garcia. Sandra is a marketing and branding strategist and diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant. She has built her business through perseverance. As someone who's been an entrepreneur for some years, would you tell me how important is it to be open to change? Change is the name of the game. I love to say expect the unexpected because literally you can have a to-do list and think that your day is gonna go one way. By the time you're on your first call, second call, the to-do list is completely different. So I would say change is the name of the game, get comfortable with it. Uh, but also embrace it and just allow it to add on to what you're already doing. And though you've experienced much success in your businesses and congratulations Thank in you. that, I need you to give some words of encouragement to people who are currently facing failure. Yeah. Where's the gym mm -hmm. and the loss? Yes. So I say that entrepreneurs are athletes to a certain degree. I ran track back in the day, way, way back in the day. Uh, and that track mentality of having grit, of pushing and still going, even when everything hurts, your muscles want you to stop, you're so fatigued. For me, that's where my grit and digging deeper comes from. So I would say entrepreneurs, it is not easy. It is over glamorized, but it is hard. So expect for it to be hard. You are not alone. It's gonna feel unbearable. It's gonna be painful. It's gonna seem like tomorrow may not happen, like the funds will not come, but just keep pushing, push through it, push through the pain, and we'll see what happens. Okay, now I really enjoyed hearing you on the panel, and you really gave words of advice, but I didn't hear you mention your vast array, your portfolio of businesses, so would you please do that now? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I'm a two-time entrepreneur, my first business was Koch Agency, which was an event planning company. I owned it with two partners. That was a learning lesson. I love them, they're still my girlfriends, but we could not do business together. 
So as that dissolved, uh, Encounter Marketing and Public Relations was born. Then two years later, Encounter Marketing and Public Relations uh, became Encounter Your Potential. So as Encounter Your Potential, I'm helping businesses and individuals encounter their potential doing just that. And our clients have included Google. This was my home base. These were my stomping grounds for Google. I have worked with HSBC Toronto. I currently work with a credit union out of Washington State. I have worked with Summit Health City MD. They were just bought out by Village MD. I've worked with Columbia University Urban School of Medicine. I can keep going. Uh, so as an educator, facilitator, as a coach, as a consultant, uh, and as a marketer that looks at things through a uh, lens of diversity. Congratulations on being booked and busy, and I wish you continued success. Booked and busy. <laughs> the third panelist is Nell Miller. She has survived and thrived in the male-dominated field of finance. Ms. Miller, it's a pleasure to be sitting here with you. You as well. Now, when I think about banking, it's often associated with men. And here it is that you are a female at the top, at the helm. So would you please explain your particular experience in working in a male-dominated industry? Yeah. By the way, lots more women um, than there used to be, but I, I guess I would say, because you and I were talking before about the male-dominated industry of banking and what I have done to maybe try to crack that, I think if I had to give sort of one piece of advice, it has been finding an expertise. So like if I think about you know joining the trading floor at 21 years old out of college, it was like, okay, I'm on this trading floor, I mean, what is going on here? And I'm gonna try to understand like equities and what a stock is and why you would wanna be involved in a company and what does the stock market mean? And I feel like doing those kind of things and digging deep into something, I think has helped me navigate maybe what was more of a predominantly male dominated place and given me some credibility. Um, in different areas um, that has helped me kind of move along. And for that women, the question. That, okay, that, okay. Does, that does, that okay. does. And then for women who may not necessarily be in banking, but yep. they find themselves in the minority yep. in their respective spaces, yep. Yep. what advice would you give to them? Yeah, uh, I think there is no substitute for hard work. And I think when you get into a scenario where different industry in your workplace. You gotta find your niche. And you gotta roll up your sleeves and figure out what makes that niche tick tock. How do you figure out like how to evolve whatever you're trying to do? And there's a lot more to that, but sometimes just doing that helps you evolve, I think, into maybe the next role or the next thing or becoming that resident expert in, you're in a fashion brand and you're trying to wonder why is everybody buying that shoe? Well, go do some research on that shoe and figure out, you know, go talk to people, go talk to customers, try to figure out why everybody's buying that shoe and become that resident expert and I think that's really helpful in any workplace. Thank you. That okay. advice is helpful even to me. I love it. All so right. thank okay. you very okay. much. I'm wishing you much luck yes. and success as you speak on tonight's panel for Women Leading the Way. Fantastic. And also on the panel is the ever-positive Melba Wilson, the owner of Melba's Restaurant here in Harlem. Miss Wilson, it's a pleasure to be sitting here with you, though everyone in Harlem knows you as Melba because of your phenomenal business. As an entrepreneur with three businesses, why is it so important for you to be the sole owner of your businesses? Well, um, it was important for me to be the sole owner, especially of my first business, which is Melba's, because it was, it's, a, it's a labor of love. It was about passion. And that's what I was looking to change the community. You know, in 2004, when I first signed my lease at Melba's on 114th and Frederick Douglass, AKA 8th Avenue, um, I knew that there weren't many people that wanted to partner with me or that would invest in me. So I decided to do something that was rogue, that was different, and to take a chance on me. So having been divorced, recently divorced, with a four-year-old son in tow, 
I wanted to invest in a community that had poured so much into me. And 114th and 8th was one of the most notorious drug blocks in Harlem. And I figured I could talk about change or I could be about change. So I don't think having partners or a partner at that time was an option. Um, as I've grown, my other two businesses, I also don't have any partners. However, what that means is that means a lot of work and a little bit of play. So while having partners, partners has its advantages, it also has its, its disadvantages. I can tell you this, moving forward, I am not going to open another business without a partner um, because it's also about quality of life. And I work anywhere between 80 to 110 hours a week. And, but I do play hard now, okay? I, I do balance that. But I'd like to minimize that and uh, you know, leave some space or, or, or pass the baton onto some of my younger counterparts. That's really amazing, and thank you for sharing that. Now tell me, how has your experience prepared you for your role as the first and first woman of color president of the New York City Hospitality Alliance? Wow, being uh, born, bred, and buttered in Harlem, being from this community that has taught me so much, hey, it's about hard knocks, let's, let's keep it real. But it's knowing that trouble don't last always. It's being surrounded by over 300 churches. It's having a tribe of people to call to, to gather with, to pray for you, to slay for you, but more importantly, to just be able to lay your burdens down with. Um, Harlem has, has really prepared me, I think, for every and anything in life. So when the pandemic came, I said, okay, I'm always in a pandemic, being a, a black female from Harlem in a white male-dominated industry. Let's say, let's keep it real. So I knew that I had to put myself together with my tribe, the team at Melvis, and to discuss how we were gonna get through this together. And that's what we did. Uh, being from Harlem has taught me to listen, as my grandmother said, you have two ears, Melby, to listen twice as much as I speak. And also to know that I don't know it all, but to surround myself with a team of people that compliment me and my business in areas that I'm not as strong in. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. You've left my mind is reeling, and I love the advice, and, and you're true about leaning into the village. So thank you for leaning into your village and for supporting the village here in Harlem. Thank you. Thanks thank for having you. Me. Women are not just opening doors in many industries, but they are kicking in the door and rearranging the furniture. That's all we have for now. Join us next time on What's Eating Harlem. See you uptown. This program was made possible by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, the Harlem Community Development Corporation, and by the West Harlem Development Corporation. Solutions through collaboration. And Harlem Park to Park. Give me that earth-shattering experience. I want to feel so radiant. Like I'm glowing in the dark And I'm the envy of the stars Yeah Me and you taking flight On this electric ride World sees us tonight We're lightning bolts in the sky Flashing with thunder And it's beautiful all over, yeah let me feel vibrations Going through my system Send shockwaves to me Send shockwaves to me Now make it go boom Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah. Shockwaves to me Now make it go Dreamers deep inside my veins I'm the echoes when I hear your name And I'm losing gravity
on this electric bike. World sees us tonight. We're lightning bolts in the sky. <laughs>